Hey folks, it's Sarah, and I'm here to talk about the 76th Annual Edgar Awards. Uh, the Edgar Awards are organized by the Mystery Writers of America, and the celebration is coming up on April 28th, 2022. The awards cover a bunch of different categories, and they honor the best mystery writing in fiction, nonfiction, and television produced within a year. And I've gone through the nomination list and all of the various categories, and I've picked out a stack of books that have been published by independent publishers or by university presses. And I've read a few of them so far, and I'm looking forward to reading a bunch more. I have my stack here. Okay, lift it up. Oh God, okay, whoa. I'm not sure how much of that is actually showing, but woo, and there they go. Maybe we should button this next button, see how that goes. Here we go. From the best paperback original category, I picked up Bobby March Will Live Forever by Alan Parks. And this is from Europa Editions as part of their World Noir series. This is Scottish Noir. It's the third in a series about a police detective named Harry McCoy. It's set in the summer of 1973 in Glasgow, um, and uh, Bobby March, of the title, is a, a young, um, well-known rock star, and he's found dead in his uh, hotel room by an apparent overdose. And meanwhile, a young girl, um, I think she's a young teenager, uh, maybe 13, um, named Alice Kelly goes goes missing as well right around the same time and there's also a string of burglaries happening and a, a bunch of mobster activity and um, just a lot of different um, crime activities going on. It has a lot of 1960s and 1970s rock references. There's a lot of uh, scenes that take place in various pubs and there's a jukebox playing. So I actually made a playlist on Spotify <laughs> and I added every band and every group and every musician that uh, comes up in the book to my playlist so I could play it while I was reading the book and it really actually got me in the atmosphere and in, in the mood to read. It's pretty fast paced um, and because I hadn't read the first two books in the series. I had a little bit of trouble following along, actually. There's a lot of, I think, relationships and recurring characters that pop up um, that I just kind of had to guess what their story was. It's told mostly in Harry's voice, um, the detective's voice, um, with a few um, little chapters uh, here and there that are um, kind of from the perspective, perspective of Bobby March. Uh, the musician. It might be worthwhile to start with the the first Harry McCoy um, book and work your way way through. Europa Editions has been around since 2005 and their goal is to bring fresh voices, international voices, to American and British markets. Um, they publish about 35 books a year and their World Noir series has been around since 2013 and um, its goal is to bring the, f the f best um, fresh world noir um, to, to our bookstores. So I'm really excited to explore more of that. It's a world noir um, series, a lot, of, a lot of fun. For the best first novel by an American author, I picked out Deer Season by Aaron Flanagan. It's published by the University of Nebraska Press as part of their Flyover Fiction series. And this takes place in 1985, Guntherm, Nebraska, which is a small farming community. And over the weekend of open, the opening of deer season, a local teenager named Peggy Ahern goes missing. And immediately, uh, for various reasons, the local townspeople start to suspect a man named Hal, who's from the town, um, and he is mentally disabled, and he has um, a well-known crush on Peggy, the missing teenager, and he has a history of, um, I would say, misunderstood um, violence with other people in the community, and um, so immediately the, the whole town starts to suspect Hal, um, and his employers and very close friends um, named Alma and Kyle 
Costigan, um, they are the two who kind of step up to defend how, um, from what they see as, um, is accusations that are not substantiated. It's a, it's a crime and mystery novel, but really it's more a portrait of this small town. And I thought it was absolutely wonderfully told. It's told in three perspectives. So it's told from out the perspective in alternating chapters of Alma and Kyle. So they're the married couple who are friends um, and almost like caretakers for Hal. And then also um, Milo, who is the uh, brother, younger brother of the missing girl, Peggy. And so it, by using these different perspectives, Flanagan gives, gives us a, um, three different views of the town, three different views of the, the case, and all three perspectives are in their own way kind of outsiders in the town. Um, but in, in three very different ways. The setting is early winter and the tensions are really high, so it's pretty, it's pretty bleak. It felt very nostalgically 1980s. There was a scene where one character comes home from school and um, his snack is Oreos and milk. And I feel like in, in that moment when I read that, I was like, I think I used to have Oreos and milk as, as a snack after school and that was completely acceptable as like a healthy after school snack. Structurally, what struck me the most about this novel was how Flanagan uh, used flashbacks. I would say every chapter had some sort of flashback, but they weren't different flashbacks. Um, she returned again and again and again to the same flashbacks. Each time you learned um, just one more little detail about the memory or the event or one more piece of the emotional context around the event. It felt by the end, it, it kind of functioned in the same way that I would say gossip in a small town kind of functions where you, you not everyone knows all of the details all at once. And you know, as you're, you're reading about these sad or violent or um, personal uh, memories, you feel that kind of a slimy tension of wanting to know more. And so you keep reading and you keep finding out more and one more little juicy tidbit, one more little juicy tidbit. So the publisher at the University of Nebraska Press has a really cool list of titles. I highly recommend checking out their website and um, just searching through what they're publishing, um, specifically their flyover fiction series, which is what this, this book is a part of, um, looks really great. Um, I'm gonna read the description here. It's um, the flyover fiction series is described as fiction set on the Great Plains, a region located in the center of the US and referred to either sentimentally as the heartland or dismissively as flyover country, a region more clearly defined by what it is than what it by more clearly defined by what it is not than by what it is. Books in this series actively engage through plot, character, setting, or theme with what it means to inhabit this region. Um, and as a Midwesterner, I really adore fiction dark, bleak fiction that's set in the Midwest for some reason. I, it's just something I seek out and I love. Um, so I highly recommend checking them out and checking out this book. And the last book uh, from the Edgar Award nominees that I have actually read is from the uh, Best Novel Award category. And from that list of nominees, I picked up Five Decembers by James Kestrel. I'm gonna try to zoom this in a little bit. Um, this is published by Hard Case Crime. And James Kestrel is actually a pseudonym um, for an author who um, I believe has written other um, like horror and suspense novel novels. This book is, um, it is quite a ride. I, I wasn't sure what to think, but I loved it from the first sentence. Five Decembers opens up on Thanksgiving Day in Honolulu in 1941. So we're only days before the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. And police detective Joe McGrady is called to the scene of an extremely gruesome crime. And he spends the next few days um, investigating and Joe McGrady follows uh, an early lead on the case across the Pacific um, again before the attack on Pearl Harbor and he ends up overseas when the attack happens and essentially is stuck 
uh, for the entirety of World War II and makes his way kind of across um, the Pacific. In the New York Times, um, Sarah Weinman um, writes that some of her favorite crime novels juxtapose individual murders against the backdrop of wartime mass carnage. And the way she describes the structure of the book is that it has an, an almost operatic symmetry. And I really love that description because that's, that's what I felt as I was reading it. You have this incredibly fast opening, um, action-packed, and then everything comes to almost a complete standstill during the actual war. Um, and then following, immediately following the end of the war, the, the pace picks back up um, immediately. Um, and it's just action-packed all the way through to the end. Um, and so it really does have this beautiful symmetry and the, and the the bit in the middle that's, that slows down um, is beautiful and still, still wonderfully written. It's just um, got this amazing kind of symmetry, um, these action, this action that, that bookends uh, the middle piece where uh, the main character is essentially, essentially stuck um, with his own um, thoughts and regrets and um, dark feelings. James Kestrel is actually an attorney. Um, that's his day job. And he uh, said in, in an interview that he would actually write this novel on extended lunch breaks. And that's how he got his, got his way through, um, through writing the novel while having young kids at home. I believe the book was actually rejected by something like 24 different publishers. And so then, um, Kestrel decided to change his name and then he submitted it to Hard Case Crime and they accepted it. And it's kind of disconcerting to me that the, um, the publishing industry makes it so hard for an author to go outside of their usual genre. And I get it from a marketing perspective when you, you know, when you know an author and you pick up another one of their books, you want to kind of know what to expect. From the writer's perspective, it makes it so difficult to explore uh, new ways and new themes and new just anything new it's a bummer that as a writer you can get so, so stuck in one lane when obviously a writer as talented as james kestrel has the talent and the ability to explore in multiple directions so i just thought that was an interesting part of his publishing story so the publisher, Hard Case Crime, um, they publish hard-boiled crime fiction, um, including both um, lost, like lost noir masterpieces, as well as new novels like this one. Um, and they all have this original cover art that's very, very pulpy, um, pulp inspired. Um, so I recommend going to their website and kind of just scrolling through uh, their, um, their books that they've published just to get a sense of all that they have to offer. So the books that I've picked up but have not read yet include um, the category Best Critical and Bio Biographical Book, um, which I picked up um, A Life of Graham Greene, uh, The Unquiet Englishman. This is published um, by W.W. Uh, w. Norton and Company. And um, I'm looking forward to reading this very much, but I decided I would like to familiarize myself with a little bit more of um, Graham Greene's uh, novels before I dive into this. They also have an award called the Simon & Schuster Mary Higgins Clark Award. It's the, uh, the book most closely written in the Mary Higgins Clark tradition according to guidelines set forth by Mary Higgins Clark. The protagonist is a nice young woman whose life is suddenly invaded. She's self-made, independent, with primarily good family relationships. She has an interesting job. She is not looking for trouble. She's doing exactly what she should be doing, and something cuts across her bow. She solves her problem by her own courage and intelligence. Um, and the story has no on-scene violence and no strong four-letter words or explicit sex scenes. So in that category, I picked up um, Clark and Division by Naomi Hirahara. This is set in 1944 Chicago, and it's the story of a young woman uh, searching for the truth about her revered older sister's death. Um, and it brings to focus the struggles of one Japanese American family released from mass incarceration at Manzanar uh, during World War II. So I love the end papers, the, um, the, the map 
um, of the Clarkton Division area um, of Chicago, which is really great. This is published by Soho Press um, as part of their Soho Crime um, imprint. So then we have a couple of books um, from the award category called the J.P. Putnam Sons Sue Grafton Memorial Award. And I'll read the criteria again. Um, the book must be at least the second in a series, and the main character has to feature a female protagonist with quirks, but also with a sense of herself, with empathy, but also with savvy, intelligence, and wit. In addition, she has to be a contemporary professional investigator, but not employed by any city, county, state, or federal law enforcement service at the time the book takes place. So one of these books I have already started and I'm really enjoying, it's called Sleep Well, My Lady by Quay Quarte. And um, Dr. Quarte is actually a retired physician as well as a writer, which is really cool. Um, this is the second in a series. The first was called The Missing American. Um, it is set in Accra, Ghana, and the um, private investigator, Emma John, um, investigates the death of a Ghanaian fashion icon and social media celebrity, Lady Araba. Um, so I am really enjoying this so far, but I've only just started it, um, but it's really great. And interestingly, another Chicago book called Runner by Tracy Clark. Uh, this uh, takes place in the dead of winter of Chicago, um, and which for some reason makes me more excited to uh, read it. I, Chicago in winter, um, most people hate, but I actually love. <laughs> and it's about a 15-year-old girl, Ramona, who was run away from her foster home. And a former homicide cop turned PI, Cass Rains, is brought on to help find Ramona. But Cass soon discovers that Ramona is holding secrets dark enough to kill for it, and anyone who helps her may be fair game. And I should also say that these books are published by, this is published by Soho Press, I believe. Yep, this is published by Soho Press as part of their Soho Crime imprint. And this is published by Kensington Books, which is based in New York. It was founded in 1974. It's, a, it's a, actually a multi-generational family-owned business, which is pretty cool. So, runner and Sleep Well, My Lady for the Sue Grafton Memorial Award. And finally, I have one more award that I want to mention. It's kind of like a Lifetime Achievement Award, and it's called the Ellery Queen Award. And um, it was established in 18, sorry, in 1983 to honor outstanding writing teams and outstanding people in the mystery publishing industry. This year's awardee, um, her name is Juliet Grains, and she's the SVP Associate Publisher at Soho Press. Um, where she has curated the award-winning Soho Crime imprint since 2011. A few of these books were published by Soho Crime, um, including um, Sleep Well, My Lady and Clark and Division, right? But I also have three other books published by Soho Crime uh, that I wanted to show off. So the first one, um, I can't wait to read. It's called The, the Widows of Malabar Hill, um, and it's by Sujata Masi. And um, I think this is the first in the series, uh, but I, I've wanted to read that for a while. Um, so I'm look for, looking forward to reading that. But then also, um, we ha I have two books here, part of a, the same series, same author. This one is called An Elderly Lady is Up to No Good. It's by Helene Turston and translated by Marlene Delargi. This is translated, I believe it's translated from the Swedish. Um, so this is short stories. It's literally, it's about an elderly lady who murders people, <laughs> who get in their way, just, you know, like annoy her or, you know, displease her and just get, get in her way. So tiny. Um, and I love the cross stitch. The, the cover is like the um, cross stitch designs. Um, and it's just, and there's cross stitch kind of throughout um, the book. And then this is the second set of stories about the same 88 year old Maud um, is her name. Um, so that an elderly lady must not be crossed. Um, similarly, this is, uh, this is like embroidery on the cover of this one. Um, an elderly lady must not be crossed. So I can't wait. I've already, I've started an elderly lady, um, is up to no good. And Maud, um, Maud is, is fantastic. Anyway, thanks so much for listening. If you want to join me for many more discussions about books published by independent publishers, small presses, and university presses, I hope you'll hit subscribe. Let's see, what do I actually, what do I have planned? I, I'll be reading books from uh, $2 Radio, Grey Wolf, Tin House, 
Coffee House Press, Alice James, Small Beer Press, Handheld Press, Charcoal Press, Strangers Press. Oh my gosh, there's more, but I've forgotten it. <laughs> I've forgotten my whole list um, of plans. Thanks again for joining me, um, and I hope you go read a book. See ya.